Hello everyone, it's Justice, and today we are going to be looking through all of the notebooks and journals that I filled during my time when I was in China. In 2018, I did a study abroad program in Tianjin, China. Reason being, I was at a point in my life where I really needed to expedite my graduation, and so rather than working during the summer and then doing the final fall semester that would be on my program, I decided to fast track it, go to China during the summer, graduate, and kind of be done with it at that point. The reason for that is because my partner Danny and I were actually at a point to where we had to commute back and forth and be long distance at that time, and I really did not want to spend another large portion of the year with us having to pay rent for two apartments because that was really difficult. And along with that, it's just difficult in general being long distance. And so we figured, hey, why not have me fly across the world and be long distance that way for a little bit so it could only be a portion of the time. So we went ahead and did that. And it would also mean that I could get in the working force a little bit sooner instead of kind of doing what I was doing at the time. I was just a student. It would get me actually working, having an income a little bit faster since I would be done with school. I wouldn't have to focus for it. So we went ahead and did that. For those of you that don't know, my college degree is actually in Mandarin Chinese. And so I can speak at about a middle school level, nothing super duper awesome, but that's my degree. Why is that my degree, you ask? In high school, I really wanted to be a business major. In high school, I was very bad at math. I barely passed statistics. Being a business major was then out of the question considering the amount of accounting and business math courses there were. So then I was an art major. Being an art major is not generally fruitful. So then the only thing that interest me, interested me was Mandarin Chinese. That's the reasoning behind my, uh, my degree. Because I went to a high school where it was full-time dual enrollment, and so I went to quote-unquote high school classes on a college campus for college credit. And so the only languages available there were French, Spanish, American Sign Language, and Mandarin. And having to fulfill my state graduation requirements, I had to take a language. My family is Spanish speaking, so I didn't really want to do Spanish because although I can't speak Spanish, it just seemed very unenticing to me. French is very closely related with Spanish, and so that was out the window for me. I am not the best with my hands, and so that ruled out American Sign Language with left Chinese. And during my time in those classes, I really found that I liked it. And so I went ahead and proceeded with it. And that's the story of how I ended up with a degree in Mandarin Chinese when I live in the Florida Panhandle. <laughs> Fun story, huh? Anyways, flipping through these actual journals, because I'm sure that's what you're interested in more rather than just my entire life story. But these are Traveler's Company inserts. I started, the very first one that you saw, I started, I think that's this one? Yes, this is still the first one. I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna say that part of the phrase again. I started this journal before I went to China. And so this is going to be a lot of my time in which we're kind of preparing for me to go, where I'm feeling homesick before I'm even gone. We also took a small trip to Atlanta during this time because it was 2018. And we could, the world wasn't shut down at that point. And a lot of it is just kind of expressing where I am in my life, where I am emotionally, how I'm very excited, but very nervous about it. Because this trip for me was my very first time abroad at all. And I was going alone. And I was going to China where one, the time zone is completely different from where I am back home. And a lot of the language, although I can understand some decent bits, I'm not confident in how I speak it. And so in my head, if I were to get separated from my group, that's it. That's just the end. And so it was a, it was a little bit nerve wracking for sure. 
everything turned out fine. Here I am two, three, two and a half years later, and I'm completely fine. Nothing bad happened. Wasn't taken anywhere. Didn't get terrible, terrible food poisoning, though I will get to that. And we're generally fine. A lot of my time that I was there, I regret not enjoying it more. I am very much a person to where I rely on the support system around me, which is my family, my partner, my best friends, and my cats. I really heavily rely on those people in my life. And while I was there, I missed them so much. I missed not hearing my cats pitter-patter around, fight in the background. I missed my partner not being there to just generally talk about things with and be physically close to one another. And I just spent a lot of my time homesick. I have a lot of journal entries kind of writing about how I wish that I could be back home, how I'm surrounded by everyone having fun and I'm not because I'm still mentally living across the world while things are happening right in front of me. And so that's definitely something that I wish would have been different, though I don't think that I could have gone without those feelings, if that makes sense. While I understand that it would have been awesome to take this as an amazing opportunity, like, um, not many people get to do this. You are so... You get to do something that not many people get to do, be grateful type of thing. I was so sad. <laughs> And I, I wish I couldn't have been, but I don't think that any circumstances could have put me in a mind space where I wouldn't have been sad. Like, even if I were single, had no pets, blah blah blah, I think that I still would have been like, oh wow, I really miss the United States though, I kind of feel funny. <laughs> because that's what a lot of people were feeling on the program. As much as China was awesome and amazing, and I dream about going back every single day, being there for three months with classmates and then not being able to really have interpersonal communication beyond that was a little bit daunting. But you know, we made, we made the most of it. I, for one, really enjoyed the stationery that I was able to find there. I live in rural Florida. I don't know how many times I've said that, but in case you're new, I live in rural Florida. We don't really have stationery stores around here. Even my closest office depot is about an hour drive away. The closest Michaels is about an hour drive away. I don't have anything nearby that has any type of super fun niche stationery. So actually being in China and even the corner store had tons of stuff that I've been seeing online and have never seen in real life before. I was like, oh wow, holy cannoli, here I am, motherland. And there was also a mall that was about a 30 minute walk from our dormitory. If I walked to that mall, I could go up to like the third or fourth floor and there was a store called Monogram. And I spent so much time there. Let me tell you, for such a tiny stationary store, I was there for a lot of time. I have never been able to walk into a store and see fountain pens or anything like that. And so going somewhere where I was able to be like, oh my goodness, there's, Kavecos and Pilots and Platinums and oh my god, I've never seen this one before. This must be like a continent exclusive or something it Was so amazing to me. I was just looking around eyeballing everything The people that worked at the store would come up to me and be like, hey, is there anything that you want to see? And I was like, uh, not really. I just like staring at everything. So sorry. I'll buy something. I promise and buy something I did I bought tons and tons of stickers in which you'll see me using them all throughout these um, notebooks. I bought a ton of sticker kits. In addition to that, I also bought a Pilot Cavalier in Fine Nib. If you watch my fountain pen collection, it's a pink bodied pen and it looks like it almost has like flower petals printed on it. Beautiful. I got that pen in China. I also got... Um, a green Yoroshizuku ink. I can't remember the name of it to save my life, so I do apologize, but I also got that little ink. I had a very fun time. In addition to that, there were many historical sites and things like that. One that comes to mind is the 
Terracotta Warriors area, they have little stamps for tourists like me to stamp their journals with. And so I did that and Monogram actually had like little store stamps where you could stamp like Monogram in your journals. And I really had a fun time with those. They bleed through so badly, but I wouldn't miss it for the world because I'm never going to see those stamps again, probably. And even if I do go back to China, I bet you they'll be worn out and there'll be different stamps. And if they're not different designs, they have to be physically different stamps. There's no way they're going to use the same ones for years upon years whenever they're expecting tourists to take care of them, you know? And so that's one of those things that I find really special where I got to use that stamp. Even if I go back, I'm probably not going to use the same one. So that's like a once in a lifetime thing, you know? Here, look, there they are. You can see them right there. So there's the terracotta warrior and the little horse. And on this page, you can see that it bled through quite a bit. And so I had to just dodge it. To the right on that page, you can see a little uh, cable car. There was at one point in our trip where we did like a little cable car trip over one of the mountains and a lot of people were actually hiking the mountain. You, you can do that. I was not having it. I was in a bad mood. I didn't want to do it. I had to go on the excursion even though I'm not very much a naturey person, which I get it. Many people love nature, love hiking, love to see the beauty and the majesty of the world. I'm not that girl. As much as I wish I were that girl that could really appreciate nature and go hiking and do all of that, I'm really not. I know myself. I'm not going to spend an entire day hiking up a mountain that I don't care about. And so I just paid for a cable car and met them at the top. <laughs> it was beautiful though. I would, re I would never trade that. I t kept that little brochure, put it in my notebook. And look, you even see little pictures that I took from the cable car. I've never experienced anything like that. Again, I'm from Florida. Haven't really seen the mountains all that much. All inspiring. Love a good mountain. In addition to that, two other places that we explored that really stood out to me. The first is actually the Summer Palace. The Summer Palace and the Forbidden City and the Hanging Mountain Temple. <laughs> okay, so there's, there's a number of things that really stood out to me, okay. So the Summer Palace I really liked a lot because I found that the flowers and the nature and just the setup of everything there, the little bridges over the water, they were darling. I loved them so much. I think I have the most pictures from there in terms of like printing them out from one space. For a lot of our little excursions, I think I tried to do one or two photos for each place, but that one I had to have a full page spread, I think, because it was just so beautiful. Flowers were blooming. There were bright pinks and indigos and lavenders. And I'm talking about colors. I don't know what the actual flowers were, by the way. <laughs> and the walkways over like water areas, little bridges, they were so beautiful and they were intricate. There were places to where you could walk under covered awnings and if you look up there's paintings all under it so whenever you're walking and if it's raining you can still have something beautiful to look at i thought that was really stupendous i couldn't imagine anything like it before and also with the forbidden city the, the Forbidden City in my head is essentially the Versailles of China, where it's forbidden to everyone unless you're like super um, in with the emperor and all that, you know? And so looking at those ceilings, they also had paintings and paintings and tiny little intricate things on the ceilings, on the walls, everywhere. It was amazing to me. I, again, can't imagine anything like it. I'm really glad that I got to see it and experience that. And also statues. A lot of temples um, had statues. I never realized that I was afraid of statues until actually going to China and visiting Buddhist temples. Um, statues, to my understanding, are very common among Buddhist temples considering I saw very many of them and couldn't actually tour most of them because I was too afraid. And there was actually one that I went to where I believe Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that it's one of the oldest Buddhist temples in China and it's essentially a cave and you walk in and there is a huge towering statue of Buddha 
probably like 10, 20 feet tall. It was giant. And then surrounded by this very large statue is 100 baby-sized statues. And I, it's very dark. And so of course they're lit up by spotlights. I walk in, see this giant thing. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to look down at the ground so I can still hear the history of it. And then I see that I'm surrounded by eyes. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna hear the history of this this little cave cavern area. I, I gotta go, I can't do it. And so that was very fun for me to understand and learn once I was surrounded by statues. <laughs> oh, and on that, one thing I do have to mention, the Terracotta Warrior Museum area, that was far less daunting than I thought it would be because you're essentially, the setup almost was like, you're watching a basketball game and you're in like the stands where you're kind of risen above the area where people play basketball. And then down there is actually the site where all the little terracotta warriors are set up and there's little dig sites. That was not too bad because I'm up looking down at them. They look far less intimidating that way. And so I could do it. That was fine. I was a little bit underwhelmed though. Like Disney Channel's Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior. I expected more from this. <laughs> I blame Disney Channel Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior for making me think that it was going to be a little bit more magical than it was. And that's not to say it wasn't amazing. Like imagine being an archeologist and starting to dig and being like, so yeah, I found like three human sized statues. None of them really look the same. They're all individual. Hey. Hey boss, what do I do with this? Like imagine being the one to discover all of that. That's amazing. Especially since all of these were made and they're all very unique. I just was not, that's just not my thing. Again, I wish I could be the type of person that super duper appreciates that similar to hiking. I'm not, I, I gotta say, when I go back and think about the highlights of my trip to China, it's, it's honestly so stupid. One, it's the monogram store with the stationery. That was really fun to me. Two, it was kind of seeing all the flowers and all of the paintings and things from our excursions. Those were really fun to me. Um, I also made a lot of good friends. Um, one of the students at the university that I was studying at, um, if you're watching this Chun Chun, it's so nice to see you. I hope that you're doing well. She was super duper sweet. We got to spend some time together. I really loved that. We got to eat out at places. There was a place called Super Boom Burger because I was really craving American style food after months of having Chinese food, which was delicious, but I was really craving a burger. So we went. They are so smart. They provided little disposable gloves for you to eat your burger with so that your hands don't get disgusting. Why is that not something that we adopt here, USA? Why? I have to ask you. They are living in 2036. We, 2010. Please provide little disposable gloves if you're going to serve someone a burger. I cannot express enough how amazing that was to me. <laughs> also, I just really liked exploring. I was somewhere a little bit more metropolitan than where I'm from, and so if I walk 30 minutes, then I could get to like two different malls. I could get to different parks. I could see a lot of things in a 30 minute walk. Where I am now, I can barely get to a Walmart with a 30 minute drive, honey. <laughs> and so it was really amazing to me to be able to just walk around, explore things, have a good lunch. Oh, if you get lost, no problem. There's going to be a taxi on just about any road that you can call over and then tell them where you're going, they'll take you. That experience to me was very fun. It makes me really want to live somewhere where I can just walk around and do foot traffic again. Um, even whenever I went to university, I didn't live on campus and so I still had to drive around. So I lived maybe a 10, 15 minute drive from campus. And then I lived about 15, 20 minutes away from where I worked. So although I could walk, it would take me like an hour if I really wanted to do it. And if you're someone that's going to university and you're working, that's not really something that you will schedule in just because, you know? 
Like, if you're worried about your grades and worried about getting to work on time, you're not going to schedule in an hour to walk when it could take you 15 minutes. And you know, that isn't to say that if I were to live in a walking place that I would just drive the one minute to where I'm going instead of walking because traffic is a thing. <laughs> so imagine, oh, I just, I just daydream all the time about living somewhere where I don't have to drive constantly, you know? I do love where I live. I think that where I live is absolutely wonderful. I think that my quality of life could be improved just a little bit if I didn't have to drive everywhere. <laughs> Or even if I could have like delivery food more than one pizza place, that would be great. The only place that will deliver food here is one pizza place or our local grocery store started up delivery around COVID time. So that's awesome. Other than that, you got to get out and get in your car though. <laughs> I am now flipping through my actual like study journals. So of course I was here for school. I had to study. All of my classes were quite small here. In my program, our classes were like four to five people in my in my level of classroom. So I was an upperclassman, there was only a few of us. This program is really targeted towards people that are getting into Chinese language and getting into that major. And so there were a lot of people in the introductory classes and the intermediate level classes. There's only about four or five of us in the advanced classes though, which I think really helped me specifically because although I was in the advanced level classes, I was not excelling, I guess. I was one of the lower marked students in the advanced classes, I do have to admit that. And so I had help from my classmates a lot. And because there was only a few of us, our teachers could also see that I was the one struggling and keeping us behind. And so I think that I was able to get a lot of help and a lot of reassurance because there was only like four or five of us to actually look at. And so whenever I was the only one to not get them right in terms of like quizzes and things like that, they would look at me and be like, okay, you need help. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I do. Please help me. And so we would arrange for my fellow students to set aside some time, help me with my homework, help me practice. And that really worked out a lot for me. I do have to say that I was a little bit frustrated because I asked a lot of the people, I was like, okay, so what are your study techniques? And they were just like, well, I don't, I just kind of know it. And me, the struggler I am, was just like, oh, you, you just understand this foreign language that doesn't even use um, an alphabet system like ours that uses completely different strokes as well as tones to indicate different words. And they're just like, yeah, I just get it. And I'd be like, mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, can you help me? <laughs> can you help me just like get it like you do? Because I, I certainly don't. <laughs> and I don't know if, if um, any of you else out there were the people in class who were just struggling and not getting it, because that's me, but it's so frustrating whenever you're kind of looking around and you're seeing that everyone else is ready to be done and move forward. And you're just like, I don't even know what I don't know go on go on without me because i'm not going to hold you guys back but i don't know what i don't know and i i just don't know <laughs> that was me hi that's me that's me i also spent a lot of time in these books just repeating things repeating things repeating things trying to get it right trying to memorize trying to get my stroke order down and a lot of my notes are very organized, color-coded. I even have little color-coded tabs to separate the different classes that I was in. That is because two philosophies. One, I find that I need something to be pretty in order for me to actually take time to look at it. As vapid and terrible as that is, I am more inclined to look at something if I know it's pretty and I know I have something to look forward to. If I just have very plain black and white notes, that's it. I don't want to open that. My brain is just going to look over the page and be like, oh wow, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> and so that's why I kind of decorate things, keep them pretty. But two, it's also just a way better organizational system. If you've seen my previous flip through that I think I published it last week, 
At the very end, I was flipping through one of my old high school notebooks where I kind of used it as a commonplace book for all of my classes. I had a lot of doodles, a lot of washi tape, a lot of different layout styles in that book because I found that it helped me kind of remember more if I could picture the page in my head and where that information was. So if I make it visually appealing to one, get my attention, and then two, kind of stay in my head a little bit better, that works for me. And so I had to get the muscle memory down for rote memorization because unfortunately a lot of Chinese is not, this is this because of this, it's, well, this is just how it is. Kind of like how with the English language, there's a lot of things where you can't really explain, oh, well, this is why this is. No, it's, well, that's just how we speak, get used to it. And so I had to just keep memorizing and memorizing, being like, oh, okay, well, I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and over and over and over again. And so you're gonna see a lot of pages of me just doing the same thing over and over and over. That's why. I'd also like to say, I, like writing in fountain pen. I think that you all know this. Even in my like note taking books, I write in fountain pen. I use washi tape, I use all of my little fun stationary goodies. That is something that follows me in every aspect of my life. I know a lot of people for school notes, they kind of do different things because that's what that will work for their brains. Like they'll do digital notes and type them out or they'll just use a regular notebook and a ballpoint pen because they're notes and they will just write it down and that's it. I keep it in every aspect of my life that I possibly can because it is more interesting to me and also I've gotten snobby over the years. I don't I don't like writing with ballpoints and regular gel pens anymore just because I feel like something is missing in my life and it will irritate me. And so I have to be using all of my things, keeping it the way that I like it because I'm persnickety and I'll be feeling like I have missed out on something if I don't, you know? Any, anyways, any hoodle doodle poodle. I would like to thank you so much for watching these flip throughs with me. I got a few requests to do more flip throughs of the journals that I kind of showed in the last video and I, I, I will be doing those in the future. I think I just need to spread them out just a little bit. But if you liked this video, please be sure to like. If you would like to see more, please subscribe. And as always, please leave a comment if you have any questions or if you also had an experience where you were at a study abroad program or you were just abroad and you felt very, very homesick. I would love to commiserate with you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have a great one and bye-bye.